Hello everybody. I'm going to do something a little bit different here. I've been playing a lot of games on the channel lately, but as I mentioned a couple of times, I'm trying to get ready for the fall. Uh, in the fall I have five classes that I have to teach. Not that I have to teach, that I get to teach. Because um, I do love it. Um, but three are undergrad classes, two are graduate classes. Uh, it's a hell of a lot of work to prepare. It's going to be a hell of a lot of work to run. Uh, but one of the classes this fall is hands down my favorite. I'm really excited to teach it again, and that is digital forensics because I like to think digital forensics kind of my jam. And uh, I've given a couple of conference talks on it, and um, they're on my channel too. Uh, the most popular video I have in terms of watches not necessarily in terms of crowd response mind you because this is a small channel uh but the number one i have in terms of views um are is my 2021 cybersecurity forward talk for windows 10 forensic artifacts um and that is followed by my number four video uh which is analysis techniques in image forgery detection which it was a 2020 cybersecurity forward conference talk um and uh you know i i've been doing a lot of hacking simulator games um but i, I anyway point is i i haven't done a lot of uh forensic digital forensic videos lately um and uh since i'm prepping for uh digital forensics in the fall i'm going through all of my pora to make sure that it's still good the scenario still makes sense that i correct any errors and, and all that kind of stuff um and um the way i have the course structured there's one big project at the end of the forensic challenge there are four smaller investigations which are I mean, they're still full-fledged investigations with realistic Kapora um, and, uh, and all that. But there's also eight small labs. And the labs, uh, I actually, we actually do together, walk through them as a class. Uh, because I'm not worried about the students finding the right evidence and stuff. I'm, I'm, what I'm asking them to turn is, in is a competent forensic report. So I don't give a shit if they know where the answers are or where to look that's kind of the whole point of using the labs as training exercises they still have to turn in their own good forensic report that's what they're being graded on um, and since we walk through them in class and i basically give them the answers while we're you know learn, learning to use the tools and all of the important things that we're looking for and stuff um, it means that i can also record them for all of you so i have been doing let's play slash hack videos lately Today, uh, I'm going to record for you a Let's Forensics video, and we're actually going to record these lab scenarios and um, go through where we find what we find. So for each of the labs, I have a, a lab document that I provide that provides a scenario. Keep in mind that Digital Capora has a long shelf life, obviously, and so some of these are going to be older technologies we're going to look at. For example, today's scenario comes uh, from 2004. It is Disappearing Act. Mr. Jim Boss, oh, and uh, I also have to mention the Capora that I use is not all mine. Um, <clears throat> I have been collecting this stuff uh, for for nigh on a decade now uh and i have many terabytes worth of simulated forensic evidence um that i have collected from all kinds of different places some of them are still available some of them aren't and i, I don't really necessarily remember where i found everything sad to say i i didn't bother collecting it when i found the stuff but now that i've been doing this for a while and i know how hard digital kapora is to generate and make available um, I wish that I had kept um, track of where I got it from so I could give credit where it's due. Um, you know, maybe I can find, maybe I can find in this. Oh, and by the way, if you've seen the thumbnail uh, to this video, I chose it specifically to annoy uh, you and you alone. So if you didn't notice it, uh, please take a look and at least give me that. I have so little. A uh, really big company is, well, what was this? Uh, no, I don't know what that is. Um, let me try Mrs. Crook, really big company. 
Oh, I came across another YouTube video of somebody doing this uh, forensics challenge assignment one. Hold on, let me... Uh, let me... I'm not going to play the video because I don't, I don't know them. Um, I, don't, I don't know them and I don't know what they're going to say. Uh, Muhammad Hadi Shafiq. Looks like they posted a breakdown of this same forensic uh, challenge. August 24th, 2018. Um, two subscribers, 954 views. Guess what, buddy? I'm going to, I'm going to throw you a sub and I'm going to throw you a watch after I get done with this. And thank you for, for posting uh, a video on this. You beat me to the punch. I'm not mad at you. Um, oh, hold on a sec. This uh, scenario comes from the ISFCE, that's the International Society for Forensic Computer Examiners. They are the governing body that offers the CCE, which I hold. Let me make sure that this is the... Yeah, I think we can do this one. I don't think that doing this one will, will be a, uh, a problem. This is the scenario that the, uh, the International Society of Com uh, Forensic Computer Examiners makes available on their site. Um, as a uh, sort of little practice run um, when you submit your um, application for certification. So I think I think we can do this one. This should be above board. I don't see that being a problem. Uh, I, I certainly don't see... There's, there's no nothing against it as a current CCE holder. I don't remember seeing anything that said not to share it, and I don't see anything on the site. So I think we're good to go. So I can give credit in this case. This is from the ISFCE. Uh, this is their sample trial investigation. All right. Turn my computer audio off so I don't get any weird noises coming through. Um, I am using Autopsy 414 for this uh, for the sole reason that it is what I have on my home computer. I'm not going to run an upgrade for this. I have a sample forensic report that I provide students. Um, this is what I expect them to fill out, and it, it should look good. This is what they're being graded on. And let's begin with the scenario. So, Mr. Jim Boss, owner of the really big company, called, and you have responded to his office. Mr. Boss advised that he suspected that his assistant, Emma Crook, was providing company-sensitive material to some of his competitors. At 2 p.m. today, he confronted Mrs. Crook with his suspicions. He told her that he would be back at 3 for an explanation. And that's uh, making, a, making notes as I go of things that I must fix. And that is the first thing. There is a typo because it does not say explanation. It says explan, explanation. Explanation. That's paragraph one. Last word. When Mr. Boss arrived back at Mrs. Crook's office at 3 p.m., she was gone. Her office was completely cleaned out of all of her belongings. Mr. Boss tried to turn on Miss Crook's computer, but it would not boot. Mr. Boss found a floppy diskette in the trash can. Mr. Boss wants you to examine the... I'm going to change floppy diskette to floppy disk. Um, floppy disk. Diskette is, of course, correct, but uh, also sounds weird. Mr. Boss wants you to examine the computer and the floppy diskette and tell him exactly what Miss Crook was up to. He's willing to pay for a 100% thorough examination. Leave no stone unturned, he said. You examined the computer and found the hard drive was missing. The computer was not networked. Your only evidence, if any, will be on the floppy diskette. Your job in this scenario, and this is what I expect students to do, is to produce a competent forensic report in your examination of the evidence, regardless of whether you're able to locate any incriminating evidence of, for Mr. Boss. Document your investigation fully. The case provides only about 1.4 megabytes of data to sift through, so be sure to be thorough. I already have autopsy up. I already have the disk image imported. Here it is. Uh, UWSB DF Lab 1.01, by the way. <clears throat> Excuse me, I suddenly have frogs in my throat. So uh, let's begin, examiner, up here. The uh, report format that I have is not particular to any one, uh, any one laboratory. <clears throat> it's uh, one that I, I created on my own. Um, 
It's meant to be simplified for students, um, but also hit all of the notes that they need uh, without having to uh, without having to worry about um, details or, or anything. It's meant to be simple, as simple as it can possibly be. All right, so this is uh, evidence item floppy disk one. <laughs> floopy disk. It's floopy disk one. It's two, one, two, one, two, two. Uh, wait, two, one, two, version history one, comments, document creation. Um, it's uh, Bring that up there. Prepared by Professor Johnson. And we're ready to get started. All right, so hardware making model we don't have. Um, a few summary information. We're going to need these at least. Um, but we can copy them more easily out of... Uh, Oh, it's been a while since I've used this version of Autopsy. I don't know how much has changed. Just history. It does not, uh, on the floppy disk, does not record that. Oh, it says type flash drive. That's, that's an error. Four documents. Um, nine total files. Four documents in allocated space. Five documents in unallocated space. Uh, cheap i mean not cheap small that's the word i'm looking for small all right oh data source summary that's where we just were there should be where is um maybe it's further in here nope <laughs> view a new window there was a there was a place where you could easily grab the uh oh i you know what i think i'm thinking of uh ftk imager i think that that had the uh, uh hash uh information um right in the corner where you could just copy it either that or maybe i'm thinking of a different version of autopsy also autopsy seems to be hanging here that's not a good thing come on All right, file metadata, there we go. Let's make sure that this is the right one, though. Summary information. Uh, yes, it is. So MD5 is 5.2 CFA, blah, blah, blah. Here we have 5.2 CFA, blah, blah, blah. Okay, there we go. Now we can copy these. All right, so this is unknown floppy diskette. Uh, we don't need, uh, we're going to bring this down here. This is going to be, uh, UWSP DF lab 01.001.25. SHA-1. Okay. I'm good on that. Uh, where's our intakes? Over here. Um, some information down here in just an intake. Z. No, 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 no. Not a. That. No. Damn it. This one, this one, this one. No, I can't do that in doc. Okay, fine then. Base is plain text. Start end. Shit. There we go. Start end. All right. All right. Item one can be described as a floppy disk found in the trash can of Miss. Brooks office 
by Mr. Boss. Um, not found in situ, given to examiner by Mr. Boss. We have no photo, so we'll leave that uh, alone. Hash the original evidence we have. We just need to copy it from above. All right. Dogs are going crazy. All right. Dogs went nuts. People came home. I forgot what I was doing. Uh, so we, um, right. In the, the scenarios that I provide for students, I provide them with disk image files or whatever. Basically, intake has already been done. The investigation phase is already done. The evidence has been collected. This is the examination phase. I do that in my forensic classes because it's just impractical uh, for me to set up you know, scenes for them to go and try and discover this information. It would be cool to, to put potential evidence sources in a fictional scene and have them process a forensic challenge over the course of the semester with that information, but uh, not the aim of the course. This is just a single digital forensics course, and there's already so, so much to learn in a single semester that uh, we can avoid the investigation phase, which means that since I'm giving them disk images, uh, of course, the most important thing is the hash value. That's how we identify the evidence and ensure that it has remained unchanged in the course of our investigation. I'm also not going to bother to duplicate that evidence, which would, of course, be the normal procedure. And in a case like this, you would never want to examine and work with the uh, the evidence as it's been given to you, you would normally make a working copy and use that and then you preserve the evidence you've been provided uh, just to avoid any potential um, accusations of impropriety or or what have you. Uh, but we're not going to do that in this case because the assumption is, is that you can always retrieve another copy from Canvas and that will be your source for the original. All right. <clears throat> uh, describe the process used to obtain the forensic uh, image. We are going to get rid of that. Uh, this, that's not pertinent to what we're doing right now. Um, and we are going to, oh, I forgot I made some changes to the form from last summer and decided to put a table in because so many students were forgetting the hash values, which is a major no-no for me and leads directly to loss of points. So there we go. And we are going to, um, we're going to get rid of this too. Not important for right now. All right. Where is that drive geometry? Okay. I'm just going to move that off to the side. You'll, you'll be able to see what it says here in just a moment. Uh, drive geometry is one point. Five, six megabytes. We're not going to, um, we're going to do, uh, one, five, six, one, oh, eight, eight bytes, one, five, twelve sectors per sector. Okay. Um, I think I have another fix here. Yeah, it shouldn't be a heading. That should be normal. You get rid of these because they aren't relevant and or are pertinent and examination of files as we saw mere moments ago is nine oops nine total four documents were unallocated okay and now we're on analysis relevant findings and so on okay um, let's get back up here and handle our executive summary, uh, which that will be filled in as we go. So, uh, contacted by Mr. Boss, really big company, um, employee suspected of misconduct and corporate corporate espionage 
was confronted by Mr. Boss and given one hour to explain unknown discrepancies because he does not detail exactly what he thinks is going on or how. Um, employee. This is Crook. Left company property. Um, and whereabouts. It's currently unknown. Known. Um, any other ones unknown? Um, company desktop um, <clears throat> without hard drive. Floppy disk found discarded in this trash can. Okay. Um, objectives. We were asked. Um, we don't have details from the computer itself, so we're not going to add that to the report. Of course, normally we would. Oop. Mr. Boss contested examination of the desktop and disk. Disket, I suppose. Um, requested a 100% thorough examination and to leave no stone unturned. Okay, and we will continue with our executive summary as we uh, as we go. Um, desktop missing hard drive. Cannot examine. No secondary evidence sources available either. Okay. Examination of the lobby sketch commences. All right. We got what we got. Uh, I put flopper disk. It should be floppy disk. I, I, I always need, by, by the way, as I'm typing this, you're going to note uh, a high number of errors. Uh, I have been typing for... 75% of my life at least, possibly more. Uh, and there are certain idiosyncrasies that I simply have been unable, or I suppose truly unwilling, to train out of myself. So proofreading is generally a five or six pass affair with me. So there will be errors. Uh, but I'm not going to make a video proofreading my writing. That would not be very exciting. All right. I think we're good enough to get started. All right. So back to autopsy. Close that. All right. So we have here an autopsy. Uh, here's our disk image. Intakes took, uh, I don't know, a couple of seconds. My autopsy is running a little sluggishly for some reason. I don't know. I don't generally run it on my home computer, uh, typically. But uh, I don't feel like going into the office. So... Uh, we have uh, two file allocation tables, as we would expect from a FAT file system. We also have our master boot record. We have a volume labeled bye-bye. So, oh, hold on a sec. Oh, oh. Hmm, excuse me. All right, let's uh, get rid of this. This is what we're looking for. Okay, uh, we have one volume by... Bye. Um, and as this is a fat file system, we don't have uh, much here to go on. We do have our M time, which is our modified time. That's 9 15 2004 at 14 33 and 58 seconds. 
Nine fifteen two thousand four at fourteen thirty three fifty eight seconds modified time and three direct re entries sign zero. Okay, let's look at our file allocation table here first. And if uh, autopsy continues to be sluggish, I may switch to a different tool here. I simply don't have time to wait for things like this. All right. Fat one is wiped. Fat two is wiped. Okay. And so here we go down here in analysis. We begin uh, with um, volume one by by zero bytes. And we need to style this. Uh, what are we at here? This is heading three, so this will be heading four. Four um, single volume on the disk shows fat one and fat two are cleared. Disk appears to have been formatted. Disk appears to have been formatted. prior to discarding it. Okay, uh, master boot record seems to be intact. They are seems to be intact. This most likely formatted via utility uh, rather than zeroed. Uh, just noting that it was probably put into a computer and then formatted with some kind of disk disk formatting utility like disk part or something like that, rather than uh, being zeroed. Uh, by utility, meaning that what we would see if it were zeroed is that there would be no, the MBR, everything would be wiped out. You know, the disk would be all zeros. First byte to last byte. All right. Um, so we don't, it said we had four files, however. Uh, let's double check that. four documents it says that four were allocated that should be our four documents and then we have five unallocated for nine files total but i don't see uh i don't see any allocated documents here because the the fats are blown away these are the documents that we have so we need to fix that it's a uh, misreport from our uh, our tool here where did we go uh, nine total documents. Uh, nine total, all from formatted. Um, get four documents, five others carved from, um, get okay all right so what we have then is a doc file um now we don't catalog every file that we find i mean we catalog them in uh, so much as what we do is we'll do an export here um it's under reports there we go, generate report. 
uh, and we'll do files, text, just export a CSV. Uh, let's do, let's do the whole shebang here. We're not going to get much. It's a disc and it's uh, fat 12, so we're not going to get much, but might as well do it. So there's our file export here. We can see here's our card files and that gives us the F, uh, oh, this is the card file, that doc we're looking at right now. We get everything that's associated with it right here. That way we don't have to manually uh, catalog everything in our report. We just look for things that are relevant to our investigation. So that, that's what goes in the report. We don't report everything. Disambiguation is the whole reason for the examination. Uh, this seems to be the Magna Carta. John, by the grace of God, King of England, Lord of Ireland, Duke of Normandy, and Aquitaine, Count of Anjou, and his archbishops, bishops, abbots, blah, 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 blah. Um, yep, this is the Magna Carta. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth upon this continent a new nation that seems to be the Gettysburg Address in an XLS format, which is interesting. Uh, oh, and it even is labeled Gettysburg Address. Um... I'm looking for okay. Um, let's um let's go back to the Magna Carta here first. Uh, yeah. So we are going to need to do some callouts here for sure. Um, because we have some discrepancies already. So, uh, let's go down here and let's do file analysis. This is going to be a heading four. And then we do <sighs> let's open this up in a new window. I'm having trouble trying to do this on one monitor with all of these uh, uh, going back and forth between word and um, uh, autopsy and so on. Uh, just juggling them on one monitor is a problem. Typically I do this with, with two monitors and I'd have my report on, on just one and that would stay up and I can easily go back and forth between the two. So I'm going to instead, uh, to get around that, I'm going to do a new window here so that we can get at this information a little bit more easily. I wouldn't normally waste time with this. So, and autopsy is making sure that I'm wasting a lot of time with this as it's hanging again. I like autopsy. It's the, definitely the best open source forensic suite but it is an open source forensic suite and it does have its bugs. It just does. Part of the things that you live with when you use it. All right, here we go. Um, put the file metadata first. Uh, we will grab this part here. Come on, stop it. <clears throat> okay, and now we are on heading five. Okay, uh, file appears to be a Microsoft Word document format file of the Magna Carta. Okay. Uh, Word, licensed to really big company, author, Emma Crook. All right, we see Emma Crook, really big company. Uh, file, or uh, let's say, yeah, file metadata below. All right, and that gives us this here let's see we need to, this gives us dates gives us software versions okay <clears throat> excuse me all right so this was 2004 i want to make sure i follow the correct format on the form which i know doesn't seem like a big deal but when you're dealing with tons of information um, keeping things in the proper format and making sure that I'm doing them correctly. 
is very important. Believe me, when you're giving testimony on this kind of thing, it's really easy to get lost. And this is... Um, Okay, this gives us an idea of what was happening at that time. Uh, we're going to do this. this in here, and we will refer to this as the Magna Arda dot. Put that up here, too. The Magna Arda doc. If we find another copy, then we'll just uh, label them one, two, and so on as we go. Um, and we are, I just realized we also need to do this as file one as well. Okay. <clears throat> um, and typically I would actually dump this information into a table, but it really doesn't, doesn't matter that much right now. Okay. Let's do the same with this first Gettysburg address. I was going to expand on that, but that's fine. It'll catch up with us eventually, I hope. All right. Here's this. Now we're, we're adding these irrelevant files to the report because they are contributing to a timeline. I uh, normally would just condense the timeline to the relevant information uh, pertinent to the, the investigation and keep them in the timeline, and I wouldn't bother with, uh, with all of this necessarily, but we have uh, little information to go on, and also uh, Mr. Boss requested, quote-unquote, a 100% uh, thorough examination, leave no stone unturned. So I am being complete in this case, and I'm uh, putting... Uh, referring to all, all relevant um, information in the timeline. Uh, we're down here. Okay, and this will be the Gettysburg address, SLS. And this is a five in the five. <clears throat> okay, do the same as we did before. File appears to be a Microsoft Excel format spreadsheet with the Gettysburg address. File metadata is below. The same thing. Uh, yes, Word licensed to, or Excel licensed to. Excel licensed to, and it was a different company, which is what I thought, why I thought it was odd. Key computer service. Mr. Big, uh, Mr. Boss, I keep saying Mr. Big. Mr. Boss uh, did not say much about the actual corporate espionage that was taking place. But if it is with Key Computer Service, Inc., uh, then that would be obviously really relevant information. Okay. And this was a few minutes later. Two thousand four. Nineteen fifteen. At eighteen twenty-five. Oh oh Zulu time. Uh, 
Okay. I'm here for evidence source. My evidence sources usually have shorter names because normally an investigation will have more than just these files. And I will point... Oh, no, let me just do it how I would normally do it. It seems like it would make more sense because the evidence sources or the source column there is supposed to re uh, refer to which image contains the evidence. Um, and it just... Let's just do it the way that I would normally do it because it does still make sense to do it that way, I suppose. Even though we have only one evidence source in this case. All right. What else we got? We're scoring seven years ago. Uh, we have another copy. Another copy of the Gettysburg Address. This one was a couple minutes later. Um... Uh, 2204, 2004. Uh, rather than adding them here, additional copies of this document were created in this one, this one also the Gettysburg Address. Uh, no, this is a different thing. An additional copy of this document was created in the to do, do, do here, but the time is different. Second document created, uh, second document metadata goes Excel licensed to really big company. So we have two documents with the Gettysburg address, but one of them in a version of Office licensed to key computer services, the other one to really big company. Uh, we have a third file here that is encrypted. I'm not going to bother with the new window thing. It takes too damn long with uh, autopsy being sluggish. So I'm just going to... File 3. Encrypted. Encrypted. Microsoft Office XLS. We're still at five. Okay. File appears to be a Microsoft Excel format spreadsheet. It has been encrypted and cannot be read in plain text and autopsy. File metadata is in hack and reproduced below. Uh, which reminds me, I forgot to catalog my software. Uh, we're not gonna need this table here. We don't have such evidence items, although, uh, now that I think of it, Microsoft Office Suite, this is version 8.0. This is two really big company. Also 8.0, license to e computer services. Okay. Um, 
but I don't have do, 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 do. I don't have a, a section here for my own software. I need to add that to my um need to make a note, add that to the um template <clears throat> examination form for students. Um, insert toggle. Probably need three with two. Let's see here. Name, version, notes. Hot shot C four one four O. And let's format the table. There we go. Okay. You got to make sure we mark down what we're using. That's how it's done. Calibri. Wow, okay. I don't know. It looks weird. It looks like it doesn't. Oh, it's bolded. That's why. Why are you bolded? Don't make no damn sense. Okay. Um, so we have an encrypted file here. We will need to crack that. So we are going to extract that to the case. And we wait for autops to keep up. The metadata does not have a data creation that we can see right here. All right, drop that sucker there. All right, let's move on to the other five files we have. Here's our unallocated space file. There's our Magna Carta. We can see that. Uh, there's our encrypted uh, spreadsheet. Here's our Gettysburg address. Um... There's the other one. So let's see what we got. I don't see the other five files they're talking about. Or was it just one other file? Like four documents. Three MS Word. Okay. There's that. And here's the encrypted file. Yeah, I, I, I we're going to need to make an amendment to that too. The, the intake is all messed up. It misreported the number of documents we have. Four total, all from formatted diskette. Four documents carved from diskette. There we go. One uh, document. This guy right here. Encrypted. Extracted and cracked. Okay. Do, 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 do. Since we have so few entries here in our in our timetable, we are going to add an entry for that second Magna Car our second Gettysburg address file. Uh, I meant to, to to do it before. I keep getting I'm getting everything incorrect in this. My God, everyone avert your eyes. I made so many goddamn typing errors here in this. Proofreading this in the real world will drive me goddamn crazy. All the mistakes I'm making, and then I have to go back and second guess my myself. Uh, that was 28. Oh, oh, Zulu time. Let's go back and double check this, though, because I'm not, uh... I actually, was this one was created, uh, 24. Modified 25. This one was created 7. Okay, so let's go back. We need to add another one here. Insert below. 
put this here, this here, copy. This here, this here, copy, copy. There we go. Created. Modified. Uh, we need another one here. Insert below. You can uh, also get yourself a shortcut to this. I'll show you in just a moment how you can get a shortcut to doing timelines and autopsy. I'm sure you already know about it if you're familiar with the program, but uh, um, I still, for small, that's not what I'm looking for. It's, wait, all right, now I'm getting confused. This one was first. This one was second. Created. Modified. All right, we got to fix our fucking font here. Okay. All right. Um, shortcut to timeline. Just hit the timeline button. And eventually autopsy will, will catch up. Similar to generating an, a report like this where you, you have uh, a CSV with all of the files and their pertinent information, which of course we could just, this would look a lot better if we open it up in a like Excel or something. Uh, but CSVs are very versatile. Um, so we could also use a CSV to, to feed into any other system as well. Um, all right, so yeah, with a with a long enough time span here, if we zoom out, we we could we can see all events, right? Um, can we actually put that in a report? I'm not sure. No, I don't think so. But anyway, I I got in the habit of doing manual times like timelines like this a long time ago. And typically with scenarios that are more complicated, you want to weed out any irrelevant information anyway. So you're basically doing a ton of work on the timeline anyhow. So I just do it manually. Honestly, it's just, just as easy. All right. So we got four files. One, two, three. Oh, that's right. We combined the two of them together. Could just do a third entry for the other one, I guess, since it is so small. Um, that's fine. I don't really think it's relevant. It's just a copy of the Gettysburg Address that was on the disk. Um, might have been put there to try to overwrite whatever information was on there, but I, I think it's pretty clear that this... Um, encrypted Excel spreadsheet is um, way more interesting. Way more interesting. All right, so let's uh, get ourselves uh, an Explorer window to our uh, evidence. Um, one um, export. There she is. Let's make a copy of that. So we have a working copy, and let's take a look at the properties. Security custom details. Emma Crook, really big company. This is what we expect to see. Of course, this isn't a forensic you know, PC or anything, but uh, it said this was uh, Office 8. I can't remember if that's a version where we can do this trick, but let's do it anyway. Excels are actually archives. Uh, invalid. Open with... Do I not have 7-zip? should. Um, uh, da, 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 man, I got a file. All right, hold on, I'll get it open.
file open. Why is it? No, I don't want to add it to an archive. 7-zip. Oh my god, do I really have to navigate there? It seems so weird. There must be a way to do it. Um, here. Lab 01, export. There we go. So this is what we got inside that archive. I can't remember which one it is now, though. It's not this one. It's not that one. Uh, this must not be a version where we can do it. There are certain versions of Office where you, if you just open it up as an archive, you can actually edit uh, the encryption flag and just switch it from a 1 to a 0, and then you're good to go. So it would appear uh, that we are in need of another utility. We need a password cracker, so I'm sure I have one here somewhere. I must. Um, do I have it handy or do I need to grab it quick? Um... I thought I just used it for something else. Man, how many times am I going to have to download John? All right, I'm going to grab a utility. Call John the Ripper. And we're going to grab a, a dictionary. We'll just do a dictionary attack against this. Uh, I'm not going to bother with rock you or, or any of that. Um, uh, let's throw this in. <clears throat> let's throw this in the in the case. Um, yeah, we'll just we'll save it right here to to the export folder. Normally we would be more orderly, but this will get us what we need to get. And let's use English Word Dictionary. Uh, GitHub. Will. English Words Dictionary. Oh, for goobness. For goobness sake. There we go. All right, we got our words. We got our John. And we are... Okay. So wait a second. All right. We are going to change our working copy back to XLS. Yep. And we're going to get rid of these. Okay. And we're going to need command line. F colon. Hot cases. Lab one. Export. Ah. All right. Go into the John directory, drop our words and our working copy in here. Not that we really need to, but we got what we did. All right. Um, office. Okay, wait, wait, hold on a sec. Oh, that's right. Yeah, forgot. Subders. You go one more down here into run. CD so run. Okay. Uh, no. Office to John on F O whatever. 
Nope. Okay, and Oh, hold on a sec. I forgot I'm in Windows. There we go. Got our hash. And now we can run John. Yeah, John. Why did it? Why did it go right to the bash? Weird move, Windows. Weird move indeed. Um, let's run this because I can't remember. I always forget my format. Make this fortify my font size. Make it a little bit easier for you guys to see. Uh, dash dash word list. I couldn't remember if it was dash dash word list or just dash da uh, or dash dash word. Uh, word list or dash w, I guess. Words.txt. We'll run this on dash.txt uh we won't bother i guess at first here specifying anything else because uh unless we fail on the, on the first one there's not really much point um i could specify that it's an office 97 format hash but all right session completed Um, oh, it didn't crack it. Okay, maybe we do need to specify something. All right, then let's do format. Oh, I forgot the equals. And I guess now that I've typed it, I might as well finish it. Unknown ciphertext format. Is it not Office 97? I thought it was. Let's just run it again without that. Uh, okay, there we go. Done. Crook. Password is crook. Uh, we need to come back up here. Insert rows below. John the Ripper. This was version 1.90. Does this correct? Yes, 1.9. Dot O. Forensic suite. Password. Come back down here. John. John the Ripper, HER was used to crack, damn it, come on, crack the password with an English words, words list. Output, um, password is Brook, output of GR. Grab this. Grab this. Grab this. That's all we need. Grab this. Drop this. Put that there. Um, I don't like that. Like I said, normally I put this in a table. And that's the reason as well. I'm also going to change my font to console is just for contrast so you can more easily see that it is console output there there we go ah my nose all right now that we've got it let's go in here open this it is asking for a password password is crook Um, I mistyped it.
Um, all right, so that is the password. It is reserved. Uh, we don't want write access because why would we? So we'll open it in read only. And this is what we get. So copy that. There we go. So we found the evidence, but we need to make sure that uh, we're not being graded. Students who didn't attend lecture and are watching this, not being graded on whether or not you get to this point. This is obviously a good thing. It shows that you've got some forensic skills, um, but we're not being graded. And in the world of forensics, you're not being judged on whether or not you find the correct answer. Okay. It's all about documenting finding supporting evidence and being able to convey that information to other people uh possibly even lay people all right so just because you get to that point doesn't mean you can save and submit your report you're not done you're just getting started look over the document first of all make sure that it's complete that you filled everything out you didn't miss anything all right and now we need to go back up let's start with our executive summary because we have to we have to re write and report our findings here as well um i'm gonna collapse some of uh, no i don't like that i'm gonna leave a gap um examination of the, the sket showed an encrypted office document this document I won't document is correct here, but it might be confused with a doc file. Uh, so I'm going to use the term spreadsheet instead. Um, this spreadsheet contains evidence of Mr. Moss's allegations against. Uh, nope, nope, we can't. That's loaded language. We can't use that. Um, can't use that loaded language appears to contain um, proprietary company information which may be what mr. boss um, suspected the employee of stealing um, Results will be reported to Mr. Boss for confirmation. All right. Oh, and we have uh, one more important piece of information in the timeline I forgot to add. Uh, Oh, no, I need to do a conversion. Damn it. When I did the intake on the case, I uh, converted everything to CDT because I forgot to uncheck the box, and I was like, well, it can't be that big of a deal, but now I need to do a conversion here. CDT to everything else is in Zulu time, so we need to convert that. CDT to Zulu. Um... I need date as well, not just time conversion. All right, here we have 2004, September 15th at 2.33 and 58 seconds. Okay, so then that would be still. All right. Disk was formatted uh, at oh nine. Nope. Seventeen thirty three. Thirty three. Thirty three. And 58 seconds 
on uh, 2004, 09. Search those below. Uh, nope, not below. Enough, 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 enough. Above. Insert those above. 2004, 0915 at 17, 33. 58 second Zulu time. Um, floppy um, disk formatted by by volume created. And source is the same there. And because Office cannot simply realize that all of the text adjacent to the in the table is a certain font um oh did i misspell formatted no it's not misspelled it's just misused okay fine we'll use a semicolon I, that's, that's probably better anyway i'm sorry i every time suddenly sniffling here okay um Correct the password of a duplicate file. Using an English words list. All right. Um, let's double check our summary. Executive summary, most information. Okay, I think that's fine. I think that's fine. I think those are the only two tools we used. Um, I would put the English word list on there, but it's just a dictionary, um, and it doesn't. I can't really attribute it to. I, you know what? I really should. I really should. Let's uh, insert below English word list. Uh, version is going to be not applicable and I am going to just put a link to the site I used so that way if another forensic examiner comes along and uh, they need to reproduce my work they can do so and know precisely uh, which word list I used that is important. Ensuring that you document things to the point where they can be exactly reproduced uh, is important. No photo available. Okay. Okay, now we need to go down here and we need to report relevant findings. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm really trying not to sniffle here. Probably sounds like I'm doing a bunch of coke or something. I'm not, I swear. Okay, relevant findings. Um, the disk was formatted and several um, files were files were covered uh, most three of four seemed relevant to the investigation comprising a copy of the magna carta and two copies of the Gettysburg address the final file was encrypted but contained uh, evidence of data theft metadata on the on all files, including the encrypted file. 
tribute authorship to Emma Crook using a company uh, using a copy of the Microsoft Office suite licensed to the really big company. In most cases, cases. One file was created using a copy licensed to Key Computer Services, Inc. The use of encryption formatting the diskette and theft of the computer's hard drive indicates uh, the subject is aware of wrongdoing and likely attempting to destroy forensic artifacts to conceal uh, their activity. Um, the norm, uh, normally in a forensic report, I'll also include, um, using Chad Steele's, um, framework for digital profiling, which, uh, I, I get the impression is still a work in progress, but I do still like to use it. I'll try in my forensic reports to hit on all of the accesses uh, in the descriptions. So Chad Steele's um, typology uh, for or methodology framework uh, for profiling has, for example, a technical affinity axis and a sociability axis. I try to look at things from that perspective and add them to my report as I go. Um, so what I just added first there would be the forensic countermeasures axis. Uh, I don't have sociability because there's no communication occurring here. Um, but I can say the use of a weak password, the subject's last name, uh, on the encrypted file indicates they may have a low technical affinity and may use unsophisticated methods to I uh, butchered that <coughs> methods uh, to commit or perpetuate um, a potential crime investigative leads um, given the low just to, let me see if I can do it. No, I, I, I did it again. My brain and my fingers aren't working together. Of the spoliation and employee of uh, forensic countermeasures, hard drive is most likely either physically destroyed or um a hard drive was most likely attempted to be physically destroyed or was merely discarded um trash receptacles and um Grounds on or near company property should be searched for the missing drive. The Computer Services Inc. Um, is included and unaccounted in this investigation. Um, 
should hmm, investigators should um, question a potential relationship between the subject and that company. Licensed to, oh my God, I'm just going back here and I'm seeing all this red because my fingers aren't working. All right. There's probably more and there's certainly more we could do to clean this up and make it a little bit nicer. I'm sure I have tons of typos. Uh, and I'm sure I'm forgetting a couple of things here and there. Um, but overall, uh, we can get rid of these. I'm actually gonna get rid of all of these. Eat those rows. Eat those rows. Okay. Um, Oops, here's one thing I forgot already. Got to put my drive, drive geometry in my inventory. There we go. All right, and we'll, we'll leave the rest of this at that. Because that's unknown. And I would say, however, I, even though I know that there's going to be things that are missing and things that I need to fix... This is not my final report. I would... Oh, I also noticed one other thing right here. Okay, we don't need that. Um, I will say that uh, this is a good first draft, and the rest of it would all be just massaging it to make sure that... Uh, well, number one, it only contains uh, relevant information, that it, it also contains all information, that I didn't leave anything out, everything is formatted correctly. I'm not uh, making wild speculation or anything in any of this. This is all supported in some way by the evidence, uh, except of course for down here where we're talking about investigative leads that is speculative, that you're supposed to be offering advice. So you're going to have to speculate to do that. You're not going to know everything, but uh, the two pieces of advice that I have here are at least grounded in the evidence. I'm not just saying it's probably in her purse you know, or something like that. I mean, it certainly could be, but there's nothing in the evidence that says that she even has a purse or that she would put it in there or something like that. Um, so I would say that this is, this is, uh, this is enough for now and the rest of it would be just changing minor things. Um, and, uh, that is it. That's scenario one. So, uh, if you're a student and you miss lecture or if you, uh, were at the lecture and, uh, you're now, uh, watching this as a refresher, uh, I hope that that helps you um, keep you oriented. Uh, if you're coming here just kind of randomly and you were just kind of interested in seeing the scenario play out, I I hope that uh, you enjoyed this. Please let me know if you want to see more. Uh, I have eight labs to do, so I'm going to be recording eight videos anyway. Uh, but I also have uh, years and years of digital corpora that I I don't usually use because they're too complicated uh, scenarios for for beginner students. Uh, that I would uh, be happy uh, to, to go through if there's interest in seeing those. So uh, let me know what you think. And uh, and I, I may just do that uh, when I have the time. So take care and uh, we'll see you later.